The Sith and the Jedi used holocrons to hold vast amounts of information about their order. They could only be created and accessed by Force users. Today we're going to talk about every known Sith holocron in both Star Wars canon and Legends. Canon is pretty easy because we've only seen two. The first appeared in Star Wars Rebels and we don't even know who originally created it. The personality contained inside is currently known only as the Presence, which was a female voice. The holocron was found inside the Sith Temple on Malachor, but it was taken by Ezra and eventually Maul. The other Sith holocron we know of was an abnormally large one that also came from Malachor. Darth Sidious was in possession of it and he kept it hidden inside his secret fortress on Coruscant. He was known to have a number of other Sith holocrons, but we don't know how many, who created them, or what information they held. So let's move on to Star Wars Legends where we have much more to talk about. The Sith King Aedas created the first Sith holocron nearly 28,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. He learned how to make them from the Rakata, and it was passed from Sith to Sith until it fell into the hands of the Jedi, and then back into the hands of the Sith after the Clone Wars. As far as we know, the oldest Sith holocron was still active by the end of Star Wars Legends. Tulak Horde, who was known as one of the most powerful Dark Lords of the Sith, created a holocron that was housed in his tomb in the Valley of the Dark Lords, but it's unknown what information he kept inside. It's also possible Horde had a second holocron that was somehow buried in the tomb of Marka Ragnos. A Sith Lord named Urgast created a holocron about 300 years after the death of Tulak Horde. It contained teachings on the Sith ritual known as Force Walking, which allowed the binding of Force Ghosts to living beings to increase their power. The Tascolan Holocron was unique in that it contained three gatekeepers instead of only one. It was part of a West End Games role-playing scenario and not much else is known about it. Darth Andedu created a Holocron that would come to be known as the Holocron of Herses. Not only did it contain his spirit and lightsaber crystal, but also the secret of transferring one spirit into another body. It survived well beyond the Galactic Civil War into the time of the One Sith. The holocron of King Natgru was discovered about 7,000 years before the Battle of Yavin and held the history of the Sith pureblood species. Naga Sadao created his holocron about 5,000 years before the Battle of Yavin during the Great Hyperspace War. Its focus was on Sith alchemy. A female Zabrak Sith named Bo Vanda built a holocron around the same time. It held information regarding Sith alchemy, Sith poison, lightsabers, and other various weapons of the dark side. The first Sith holocron to fall into the hands of the Jedi chronologically was simply known as the Dark Holocron. After the Great Hyperspace War, the Jedi recovered it from one of Naga Sadao's fallen starships. During the Great Sith War, Exar Kun used it to corrupt a number of Jedi to his cause. Count Dooku was known to have it during the Clone Wars, but it was lost during that time. Darth Dreer's holocron held instructions for a Sith ritual that was meant to grant immortality. Dreer was killed by the ritual, and his holocron survived for another thousand years where it was discovered by Darth Scabrous, who also died attempting the same ritual. The holocron was likely destroyed in an explosion at Scabrous' stronghold. The Carbonite Sith Army Holocron was constructed about 4,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. Jabba the Hutt had the device during the Galactic Civil War until it was stolen by the Zam Consortium and given to the Empire. It contained the secret location of the Carbonite Sith Army, which was a literal army of Sith troopers that had been frozen in Carbonite and left in storage. The Dark Lord of the Sith, Freedon Nad, built his Holocron sometime after he conquered the planet Onderon. It was recovered by Darth Bane thousands of years after his death, and he used it to learn of ancient Sith magic as well as the parasitic dark side creatures known as the Orbalisks. Darth Revan constructed a holocron during his brief time as a Sith Lord. Despite his shifting allegiances, his holocron would have a major impact on the galaxy. Not only did it provide Darth Bane with the inspiration for the Rule of Two, but it also held instructions regarding the terrible dark side power known as the Thought Bomb, which Bane would use to destroy most of the Sith Order. Before the Holocron was destroyed, Bane was able to transfer Revan's teachings into the Telos Holocron, which we'll come back to. Darth Nihilus was known to have built a Holocron, but we don't know any specifics on the information it contained. After the sacking of Coruscant in the Great Galactic War, a Jedi artifact known as the Nodicon of Secrets was lost. 
A group of ex-Republic military sought to recover it and mistakenly bought a fake that turned out to be a Sith holocron containing an entity known as the Master of Questions. A unique holocron was discovered on the planet Kruskin about 3,000 years before the Battle of Yavin. It was spherical in shape, and it exploded when a non-Force user attempted to open it. Belia Darzu was a dark lady of the Sith known for the creation of Technobeasts, abominations that were part organic and part machine. Her holocron contained the secret to making those terrible creatures, but also some information on the actual construction of holocrons, specifically regarding the capstone which housed the gatekeeper of the device. The art of Sith holocron construction was lost for hundreds of years before the time of Darth Bane, but the founder of the Rule of Two searched the galaxy for the holocrons of Revan, Frieda Nad, and Belia Darzu so that he could build his own. His first three attempts were failures, but his fourth was a success, and his holocron became his most prized possession, into which he poured all of his teachings for his apprentice Darth Xana and the future Sith Lords. Over 1,000 years later, it was in the hands of Darth Krait, but the holocron's gatekeeper refused to assist him since the current Sith Lord had abolished the Rule of Two. The Sith Nova holocron was broken into three pieces. Count Dooku worked to recover and repair it during the Clone Wars, but failed. A holocron designated as SD41263.1 was known to be part of Darth Vader's personal collection. It held the writings of Darth Ramage, who lived about 500 years prior. Shortly after the Battle of Yavin, a Sith holocron was discovered on Mustafar as told in the game Star Wars Galaxies. The Telos holocron was discovered 40 years after the Battle of Yavin, but was originally built thousands of years earlier. It was very different in shape from most Sith holocrons and was used as a repository of lore and wisdom, contributed to by a number of Sith lords including Ajunta Paul, Naga Sadao, Darth Revan, Darth Bane, Darth Sidious, and more. It was found and quarantined by the New Jedi Order. The holocron of Darth Vectivus was discovered around the same time by the New Sith Order, but it contained little information. Most of it had to do with Vectivus's business dealings and the process of projecting Force Phantoms. Other known Sith holocrons include those created by Dathka Grouch, Zozon, Sorza Sin, Elko Kresh, Kel Eth Ur, Darth Vitus, Darth Angral, Darth Riven, X1, and Darth Vua, but we don't know anything about them beyond their existence. We also know of two unidentified holocrons that were seen on Hoth and Umbara. But the final known holocron in Star Wars Legends history was that of Darth Krait. We don't know many specifics on the actual information inside, other than recountings of the Sith Imperial War. That brings us to the end of today's list, every known holocron of the Sith Order created in both Star Wars canon and Legends. Hopefully we get into holocron lore in the future of the canon, because right now it's severely lacking when compared to Legends. I at least want to know who created that one scene in Star Wars Rebels, and the idea of a giant holocron just sitting in Palpatine's private collection is very intriguing. But that's it for today. If you're interested in Sith holocrons, you might enjoy this video that goes into the process of making one. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.